there's really three right hand rules. So the first right hand rule is gonna be velocity of a charged particle cross product with magnetic field is equal to magnetic force. So if you have a charged particle moving like this, and imagine that's Q times V, V being the velocity, and then imagine you have a magnetic field, so that's the magnetic field vector, then the magnetic force will be perpendicular to both of them. The direction will be given by the right-hand rule, F, subscript B. Remember the magnetic force is sometimes called the Lorentz force. What we're gonna do is we're going to cross product QV into B and then the thumb points in the direction of the magnetic force. So this is when you have a charged particle moving through a magnetic field, the magnetic force. So this requires the use of the right hand rule. Right hand rule two is gonna be asking the following question. What is the direction of the magnetic pole when considering a loop of wire? So for the second right hand rule, it's gonna basically work itself out like this. Your right thumb is in the direction of the electric current and your four fingers of your right hand point in the direction of the magnetic field north pole. So you see the magnetic north pole is up here and then the magnetic field lines are gonna be coming out of the loop like so, okay? So the electric current is going this way. So this is the direction of electric current, right? If I was looking down on it, it'd be counterclockwise as viewed from above. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my thumb and I'm gonna point it in the direction of the current and the fingers, which way they go, is sort of the way the magnetic field comes through the loop. You see that? So only with a ring or a loop of current carrying wire. The last one is gonna be if you have a straight long piece of wire. We think about it like so. Consider this image. With a straight long current carrying wire, the thumb is now in the direction of the electric current, that's I, and then the right hand rule fingers wrap in the direction of the magnetic field. So the right hand fingers wrap in the direction of the circulating magnetic field, yeah, in concentric circles around the wire. This might even be a better way to think about it. The idea is that the current is traveling upwards. So here's the direction of the electric current. So that's a capital I. And we see that the magnetic field is formed, forming concentric circles around the straight long current carrying wire. And notice that the circles are closer together near the wire itself, but they're further apart the further you go out there. Because the third right hand rule, I would suggest kind of has a little bit of an equation to go with it. The magnetic field of a long straight current carrying wire is mu naught i over two pi r. Because of the equation, the magnetic field lines are stronger close to the wire, but they are weaker further from the wire. This is why we show the concentric circles close to each other near the wire, but spreading out with radius as we get further from the wire. Now, if you understand these three rules well, not only can you do Lenz's law, but remember two brief things to say about Lenz's law. Number one, Lenz's law is the negative sign of Faraday's law. It tells us the direction that, that the voltage that's produced goes in, and for that matter, the direction electric current goes in that gets induced. And number two, the key phrase with Lenz's law is always resist the change. You should say that to yourself all the time when you're invoking Lenz's law, resist the change, resist the change. Okay, so part A says, what is the direction of the induced current explain in words? Yeah, I think it's mostly gonna be rule two that we're using, at least at first. We're gonna induce it. But we do know the direction of the magnetic field. And whenever the magnetic field is three-dimensional, then we need to consider is the magnetic field sometimes into the page or out of the page. The question is this, are we increasing or decreasing the magnetic flux in time? So remember, when the rail moves upward, we assume that that's the direction of the velocity and the area over which there's magnetic flux decreases in time. So if there's less outward magnetic flux in time, 
then how should we resist the change? The whole idea of resist the change is to try to keep things in a state of homeostasis as if they didn't change. So first of all, you wanna decide the direction of the electric current that's induced to match the induced magnetic field. So we don't wanna say magnetic force, we wanna say magnetic field. Remember, magnetic field is just like north and south poles of magnets. Magnetic force is what actually causes charged particles to accelerate. So generally, we're not gonna be looking at the magnetic force in this problem, part A. All the blue dots are out of the page. Since the blue dots are out of the page, remember we wanna reinvigorate them because they're getting smaller in terms of the area they pass through. So we want to reinvigorate them because that resists the change. Even going one step further, if we reinvigorate them, that means we have an induced magnetic field that is out of the page. And that means from the right hand rule, our thumb must point out of the page because our thumb is in the direction of the induced magnetic field. Then given the position of our fingers on our right hand, what direction should the current circulate around the metal circuit? And in this case, in the same direction of the magnetic field passing out of the page, that's right. I think magnetic field lines go from south to north uh, by convention, at least through that permanent magnet. So it comes out of north into south, that's because they converge into north. So the magnetic field lines converge into north, but as soon as they get to the north pole, then they have to go outward. Magnetism is always pointing towards north, like true north. But then once we've reached the center of the north magnet, it then comes out because it has to form closed loops. And it comes out and passes into the south. So most of the time with Lenz's law, you're gonna be using right hand rule two. Now there's a couple more steps here. Remember, we don't wanna go straight to magnetic force. The only thing that we get when we change the magnetic flux in time is an induced magnetic field. So whenever we're changing the magnetic flux in time, the only thing that we get is a induced magnetic field. So getting back to where I was saying here, we're gonna have more magnetic field that's downward passing through this loop as we move the ring inward. So since there's gonna be more magnetic field this way as the ring moves inward, then we're gonna induce a magnetic field in the opposite direction. Remember the magnetic field, that's B, that's just capital B in blue, is directed downward. So it's directed from south towards north because magnetic field lines always go into the north magnet and then they always diverge out like in loops. Then because we are increasing the downward magnetic field lines, the loop is gonna resist the change. So the induced magnetic field, which is shown in red, that arrow upward is gonna resist the change. It's going to be directed this way. But based upon right hand rule two, with the thumb pointed this way, the current has to wrap like this, right? Counterclockwise when viewed from above. Then the real question is, what's the direction of the force? Well, we have to consider the direction of this vector and this vector, because now we're gonna use right hand rule one. So right hand rule one says, What's the direction of the charge, which is just like the same thing as the direction of the current, that's out of the page. So we take our fingers and we push them out of the page, but then the magnetic field is downward. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go IL cross B. So hopefully you can see that. We're gonna do IL, I'm gonna right rotate my fingers in the direction of the magnetic field, which is pointed downward. And you see the right thumb points in the direction of the purple vector, which is the direction of the magnetic force. So remember the magnetic force is different than the magnetic field. The magnetic force is actually in Newton's. The magnetic field is in Tesla's. So because there's a magnetic force that resists us pushing the loop inward, 
we have to actively push the ring inward. So that's why the answer is actively push the ring inward. So that's based upon right hand rule two and then one. So two helped us determine the direction of the current. And then right hand rule one helped us determine the direction of the magnetic force.